Committee, committee the whole is back in order. Um, the gentleman from Barragana, Senator Blas, is requesting to speak on this if there are no objections from the body on the amendment. No objections, Senator Blas? Thank you, thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, um, you know, this issue that's before us, this is not a partisan issue. This is an issue, quite honestly, that makes sense. You know, um, the people of Guam expect transparency and accountability in our government. And what this bill, what this amendment provides, at least with regards to, to this issue on the landfill issue, is it provides to them that mechanism, that vehicle, that so that they can fully understand what is going on with this process. You know, one of the things that I found a lot of times is that objection to a process is not necessary because people object or don't want the process to go through. A lot of times the objection to the process is based on people's not understanding what is happening. And so, you know, Mr. Chair, um, as a previous speaker had, had stated earlier, um, this is common sense. This is something that makes sense. And this is something that I'm asking all my colleagues to consider. So with that, Mr. Speaker, or Mr. Chair, I stand in support of this amendment. And I wish that all my other colleagues do as well. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Okay, if there are no further speakers, uh, we are on the Munya Barnes Amendment, calling for the vote. All those in favor, there has been objection voiced. All those in favor of the amendment, please raise your hand. Okay, motion carries. All right, uh, Senator Calvo, you're recognized. Yeah, thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, I, I've got only one amendment. Uh, again, in, the, in this amendment, the, the purpose of it, actually there's two parts, A and B. Part A is quite simple. There already is a role mandated by law of the Guam State Clearinghouse. We just have additional language in there that, that gives additional detail to, to information that to be garnered by the State Clearinghouse. And also another issue that's always been a problem is garnering reports uh, from different agencies. And the second part of it in this in uh, A is just a requirement uh, for, um, for those reports to be made pub to, to the public and to the legislature. All right, on the amendment, any speakers? Without objection, so ordered. All right, um, is there a motion at this time to um, proceed on to, uh, we're gonna skip the administrative provisions if there's such a motion and move on to chapter nine and then chapter 10, with the understanding we're gonna come back to administrative um, provisions. So move. Yes, so yeah, move. to be able to like finish. Yes, Senator Pangolina? Yeah, it's chapter seven, seven sorry. not chapter nine. Um, and then we will proceed then to uh, the, if, if I'm correct, we're suspending, notwithstanding the house rules, we're, we would suspend the discussion on chapter seven proceed on to yep we will take a one minute recess to make sure the motion is appropriate okay the committee of the whole is back in order yeah. senator cabo yeah thank you very much uh mr chair mr chair i will note that there has been a uh an uh, error in the numbering of the of the bill, the so so when we have chapter seven, uh, which is where we we completed, uh, or chapter six where we completed a miscellaneous provision, then there's a chapter seven administrative uh, provisions. Correct. Uh, we should be going on then to a chapter eight, which was um, general obligation bonds, but their numbering here has is chapter nine. So I'd like to make a motion to correct the numbering. From nine and ten to eight and nine. Yes. Okay. So the motion is to renumber chapter nine and chapter ten to chapter eight and chapter nine. Can, can you tell us what page it's easier to do that? Uh, Senator Cabo, could you just reference the page? Can you make the reference the of the page? Because it's. Uh, oh. Okay. Page the um, the uh, I, I'm 
uh, on page 96 of, of the amended bill, 143, uh, there is listed in the top of the page, chapter 9. I, I'd like to make a motion to correct it to chapter uh, 8. Okay, we'll deal with that first on the motion. Without objection, so ordered. And then on, nine, on page what is that? 108, uh, to again correct the error uh, and, and replace chapter 10 with chapter 9. All right, on that motion... Without objection, it's so ordered. All right, on the motion, then the motion in. Wait, 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 wait. All right. Page 108. What, what is that going to be after? Page 109? Nine. Senator Calvin used to have the floor. Yeah, page, I need to be nine. <laughs> and also uh, on page 113, I'd like to make a motion, uh, Mr. Chair, to replace chapter 11 with chapter 10. 10. All right, on that motion. Without objection, so ordered. All right, now back to the uh, motion. The motion then will be to skip to Chapter 7 and proceed on to Chapter 8. Well, I think the suspend rather than Suspend? Skip. Oh, sorry, yeah. Do you want to make the motion then, Senator? Yes, Biden? I'd like to just, uh, notwithstanding the House rules, Mr. Chair, suspend discussion on Chapter 7 and proceed on to Chapter 8. Um, and then, I guess, 8 and 9. Correct. And, and then, then return to Chapter 7 upon conclusion of the discussion on those things. Very good. On the um, on the motion, without objection, so ordered. We are now in Chapter 8. Uh, we're going to take a brief recess while we call in the uh, finance uh, consultants, and then we'll resume the committee of the whole. Mr. Chairman, can I just ask a uh, procedural question so that we could um, lay down the rules of engagement? I understand that you're going to allow us five minutes section by section, uh, but I also want to ask that it's no secret uh, that there are two versions. Uh, the version before us purports to borrow $90 million, and there's been another version that we've been very open about to move a $250 million bond barn. Uh, I think that what's going to happen after the presentation on the $90 million There'll be a motion to replace this section with a $250 million bond barn section. So uh, procedurally, I want to ask the chair uh, how we, he would address that. Because uh, it, would, it, it would be a motion to replace. So, so if I, at that juncture, members of the legislature would have an opportunity to decide whether we're going to go with a $90 million bond barn or the $250 million barn. I How would you address that? Um, as a chair, I will rule on each individual motion. If the motion is made to substitute a section or a portion of a section, I will entertain that motion as it arrives. Um, I don't want to anticipate, although there is a certain amount of forecasting to be expected based on public disclosure and statements of um, certain members of the body, but I will address it every section, so I won't rule it uh, out of order. I will uh, allow for each um, amendment to be so made. Also, um, is that clear? That no, how question? about as these um, sections are adopted one by one, and then when we get to the very end, uh, before we adopt that final section, I'm, I'm going to let you know in advance that there'll be a motion to replace uh, this chapter with the other version that's a $250 million new bond barn, and I, I just want to know how you would address that. I just told you how yeah. I'll address it. I will address it as I address all of the motions. If the adequacy of votes is there to substitute the section, then we'll be so acted on. Okay, and then we right. then from there we c we could speak on the motion to replace, and of then course. the bond people can give a breakdown of of what the two hundred fifty million dollar bond barn proposal would be. Correct. And we could we could and, uh, and th there's uh, so that way. So what I'm saying is there'll be, be discussion on the ninety million. Then our motion to replace this chapter would generate significant discussion on the two fifty. And then when we vote on that motion to replace, it would be either the $90 million or the $250 million. That's my point. And I just answered that. Uh, Senator Calvo, you have a point of make. Senator Wampat? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, my understanding at first is that when we, for chapters uh, 7 and 8, is that we're supposed to hear whatever, you know, these individuals have to say about both before we decide which one of the two you know, would be the amendment that's going to be part of, of the bill. I mean, I don't, I, I, I don't like the idea of having to go section by section and we're replacing it. It's just like jumping back and forth, and it's going to uh, basically make the decision in terms of which uh, bond issue we're going to address. I think 
I like to hear both sides, you know, before I make that decision. And then I think after that, then the motions, of course, can be proffered for either one. Yes. Okay. We, at this moment, uh, for the body's information, we are in Chapter 8, and the subject of Taurus is Chapter 8. We'll proceed on to Chapter 9 subsequent to this, uh, but um, I will recognize the Head of Office of Finance and Budget, Senator Calvo, who will then uh, go ahead and will proceed to the discourse of this, uh, this section. Senator Calvo? Yes, thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, again, what you have before you in, in, in Chapter 8 is, again, uh, basically a uh, proposal, and again, a section of uh, the substitute or the amended Bill 143 that deals with a borrowing authority uh, for the government of Guam to deal with some of our current issues. Uh, we've, um, since introducing this particular bill, uh, we've had the, the, uh, the honor and the pleasure of meeting with our bond council over the past couple of days where there have been some good discussions made in regards to, to this particular bill. Uh, and with that, uh, there were some modifications as a result of discussions with with the bond council in in particular to this refinancing of the 1993 bond. What I have before me again, Mr. Mr. Chair, is a, is a motion uh, to replace Chapter 8 in its entirety with this new uh, Chapter 8 that that takes into the recommendations uh, by bond council. The motion is then to uh, substitute section or chapter eight in its entirety. Yeah, replace Senator chapter eight. Correct. Yeah, yeah. that's on uh, page Shimmer. 108. That's uh, page 96. 96. Oh my lord, I'm already in. Hold on. Don't chapter eight. I I I know we were doing some ring number. That's why I wanted the, the page. So you're talking about 98, sir? We are on page 96. Okay, you said 98. I'm sorry. 96. We're on page 96, which is chapter eight. Yeah, I, I, it says cha chapter eight on page, for the rest of the group, just on page 96. Uh, that's, and the motion here is to, um, to uh, replace that in its entirety with this new. To replace chapter eight in its entirety, see attached in the number. So this is all, and, and basically, the reason to replace it is because this no longer, because I know that um, there's, because I, I, I'm going to make a motion also to replace this. And is it proper for me to move on that motion? If, if your motion is to replace the same section that the current motion is um, aligned to do, then that would be out of order. So in other words, time. right now we have to uh, uh, adopt this first. We, no, we have, to, we have to act on the motion right this now. This one, that's what I'm saying. You have to that's act correct. on this motion. It's point of information. Um, act on this motion to replace the original. Because I, I remember distinctly that on Bill on 143, we replaced the governors. Yes. So now, and, and, and then this bill is what we have. Then now he wants to take that out and replace it with something that's just before us. So right. replace the governor, replace his, his own uh, um, committee, uh, uh, amend, uh, you know, markup, and now this is that. So it would be, pro I just want to set the foundation, you know, because I think Senator Respicio mentioned that. So we have the foundation here now of replacing in its entirety and adding a new, um, new uh, chapter. So. Once we this is disposed, I will be able. To, I will be in order to to re make a motion to replace. That's correct. Because you know, originally what I had understood was that we have our guests here and welcome. That uh, it was going to be a discussion. You know, a discussion, and there's th the rules of engagement. That my 250 million is also going to be compared with what's in the. The replacement on, on this bill. This is an, a, a different, this will not even come close to being compared. I think the only similarity is the word bond between the two, but this is refinancing already existing. This is a refinancing, so is the rule of self-engagement among honorable people that 
250 is also going to be put side by side. Or that has changed. And if that has changed, because I understood that we were going to also compare 250 with this, and now we got a new version. I just want to find out if the the discussion earlier still holds with the uh, uh, the uh, uh, doctor of this motion. Yeah, are you posing the question? To yes, me? I'm asking: Is that discussion that we had earlier that it will be side by side? But now this is a whole new uh, section. It's very different. This is refinancing. Senator Cabo, will you answer the question, please? Yeah. I have absolutely no idea what the senator is talking about, but I will. Uh, I will. Um, answer I think his question is everything was to be side by side obviously we have currently a bill a bill before us that deals with the refinancing of a 1993 bond and again there has been discussions with members of my of, of, of my colleagues who have introduced a bill 168 and I have no problem with a motion to place it on into the in you know if, if that is the w desire of the body obviously we are now dealing with the bill that has 143, which is currently in, in, in discussion in, the, in this session. Uh, I would like to have the members of the Bond Council discuss this particular measure. I have no problem with them discussing Bill 168, but I don't want to f clutter everything up. I think it's important that we, we we, 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 we delve on every one of these chapters or these provisions uh, separately. And I'm not, say, I'm not discounting anything. I've, I've got an open mind. Obviously, I've had some concerns about borrowing 250 and what the potential is for future appropriations or future debt, but hey, I've got an open mind. I've got something here. The body has something in front of it. I'd like to deal with it, and let's deal with it. Obviously, the senators and other senators have would like to make uh, um, other motions to to either uh, complement or or uh, complement this particular chapter or delete this chapter with something completely different. I'm not adverse to having that 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 uh, discussion up for for uh, for this this body, sure. but obviously, what we have right now is we right. have in front of us a um, a Chapter 8, uh, Chapter 8, which is a refinancing of a 1993 bond. We've had uh, discussions with the Bond Council, and upon the recommendations of the Bond Council, I'm offering to the body a, a, an amendment that will deal with the recommendations and the issues that were brought up by Bond Council. Okay. I, I don't think one, you, you know, one, one, is an, one is one and the other is the other. So I hope I've answered the question of the senator. Um, Senator Shimei, I'll allow you, allow you 30 seconds to wrap up, although your time has expired. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, thank you. That's why, I, you know, the, um, I'm just uh, saying that I'm not, not knowing what I am, uh, don't understand what I'm saying, because uh, that has always been my understanding. That has been time and expressed that we would have a discussion to put this out there. Okay. You know, and but I just wanted to just ask that because uh, that has been the discussion the last few days was to put it side by side. But there's a okay. new uh, approach to again taking out and you know putting this. So uh, I hope he understands it now. Okay, thank you, Senator Respicio. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, a motion to replace um, this chapter with the chapter before us. If that's adopted, then essentially we're adopting automatically this version. So I would, I understand the, uh, the Chairman Cabo's uh, comments that he's going to keep an open mind. But if we adopt uh, his motion right now, just thinking that we're going to replace it, we're, we're, we've adopted it. So I would like to amend the motion to say there's a motion to accept for purposes of discussion, and that there'll be another motion in order to adopt this section. So I have to be very clear what we're adopting because I'm very. Very, very uh, understanding of the legislative process. Yeah. It, it, everything is adopted for discussion, um, but if you want to amend the motion, if you want to make an amendment, uh, well, easy. The motion is to replace this chapter with the chapter before us. If correct. this motion is adopted, then we essentially just adopted this this version, and there's no need for a presentation. 
So I, I like to amend the motion to say I motion to accept for a purpose of discussion, not to replace this chapter with that chapter. It's a very, very different uh, question before the body. And I want to advise the body. That's my take understanding a one of what recess people do. And, um, discuss this. one minute left on your time. Mr. Chairman, I'm not uh, trying to be difficult here, but this is a very, very critical component of this uh, Budget Act. We're at a very critical juncture, and I uh, caution the body that when, when there's a motion to accept this version, if that motion passes, essentially we've accepted this version and, and adopted it. So whether or not the body agrees with the $90 million presentation that the Bond Council is going to make, this version has already been accepted. So I'm just, uh, I don't know whether the presentation should be made first and then, then this motion shall be made uh, after. This is why I raised this issue with you from the very beginning is how do we just suppose this version versus the $250 million version that we're trying to uh, push that Senator Simizu has the floor amendment. All so right. once we have a motion to accept, this is gone. Okay. Um, are there any other speakers on the motion? Senator Wampat. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, if I'm reading this correctly, is that we have uh, before us in this entire bill a Chapter 7, which is the $250 million bond. Is that correct? Uh, Chap chapter 8 is the, um, the first bond measure, and Chapter 9 is the second. Wait, wait, wait. That, that's why I wanted to clarify. Okay. No, Chapter now, 8 and Chapter 9. I'm sorry, the administrative provision, I said that earlier. Chapter 7 is administrative provisions. Okay, so the, the Chapter 8 is the 250? No, Chapter 8 is um, authorization to issue a new series of bonds as either standalone um, in cutting to the chase 1993 Series A. And then on page 1, so... Okay, that's for the 90 million. Now, where is the 250? It, it, this, the, the 250, the Bill 168, is not and has not been adopted by the body, nor has there been a motion to accept that as a new chapter. We're taking this chapter by chapter. Okay. Now, so you said, normally what we do when we, at least from my understanding, is that when we, we call for an amendment and we have one that is this already here, it, it was accepted for purposes of discussion. Yes. But because there have been some changes, we want to make amendments to it, is to take this ent entire chapter out to replace it with another. Correct. Now, okay, so that's correct. Now, will the body still have an opportunity then to address the other amendments, such as the $250 million? Absolutely. Okay, and, and so the, the other question I have as well is that the individuals who are up there will be able then to not only respond to the 90 million, but also will be able to uh, fulfill the same things for everybody to understand also the 250 million. That's correct. Okay, so it's not as though we're trying to replace one over the other. There would not still, okay, so the we'll chair- We'll take them in succession. Okay, so the chair then is actually saying that you will allow then the two, to consider the 250 million also. Correct. Okay. When the motion is made, we will entertain it. Absolutely. On the motion, if there are any further no. discussion on it, just if there's an objection, yes. Okay. On the motion to substitute Chapter Eight, please show your hands. So you're raising your hand now. Motion carries. All right. Um, Sen I'm sorry, Senator Pengolin. Point of order, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, I just um, I understand that. Uh, the legislative body has invited individuals to come to the before the body to present testimony, but I'm just curious as to uh, under what authority that uh, occurs. Usually when we discuss bond issues, it's for bond issues that have already been approved by the legislature, and they come back and they talk to us about the terms and conditions of the bond. But uh, here we have a bond issue that's being contemplated by the and now we've got some financial experts that the administration is saying 
come down to the body and explain to it as if they were already chosen to do the bond issue. Now, under what law and what bond issue have they been chosen to do something that we haven't even approved in this legislature? So that's, that's the technical question I have in terms of having these individuals come forth and make this presentation as if they were already been chosen. Senator um, Calvin, did you want to yield to the question? Again, certain points of clarification, and I, I, I thank my, uh, my, my uh, work, uh, employee here who has some historical knowledge. Again, even when we had uh, the $218 million uh, indenture, uh, if I can recall, the, when that bill was up for, for uh, discussion and testimony, um, there were representatives there and officials in uh, acting as capacity of, of, of again, uh, uh, consultants to the government of Guam in regards to that issue. And, uh, and in particular to the provisions here, I think we had 28, 28149, where again, this was similar legislation was enacted. And again, we had this, I mean, we do have history to this. So I mean, this is just more of a point of information. Senator Piccolini, does that answer your question? Uh, yes, but not satisfactory. Uh, I'm just saying that usually we have the bond individuals come and present to us based on an RFP for a bond that's been authorized. And in this case, the bond that they're explaining to us, the terms and conditions have not been authorized. And I'm just saying, have they been, been chosen to do a bond issue that the legislature has not authorized? Um, and And... Isn't that a little bit talking about cart before the horse? Um, so the, there was a bond issue that was authorized by the legislature, which has since been repealed. So if they were chosen for a bond issue that has been repealed, they are now going to carry over that authorization, and they've been chosen to do a bond issue that hasn't been RFP'd for? Uh, because the terms and conditions of that bond issue that was authorized and has since been repealed are no longer valid. So in order to be able to participate in the new bond issue, I would think that we would want to come up with a new RFP for the bond issue. Terms and conditions have changed, et cetera, et cetera. So that's only a technical question that I have, and I really think it's a valid question. The body may decide what, what it wants to do, but I'm just saying that it just kind of looks funny that we chose somebody to do a bond issue for something that has been since repealed. There's no more authority to issue a bond issue and for those services, since that, the need of those services is no longer present because the authority has been repealed and we are only now contemplating new authority and new borrowing. So I just want the body to be aware of that and I think that's a valid question. The body may decide to waive all Law, if it wants. I just don't think it's prudent. Thank you. Motion, a minute recess. Senator Kell? One minute recess. One minute recess. We'll be in recess. There are folks up here to testify. Senator Calvi, you recognize. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, I think it's a fine opportunity now for maybe Ms. Uh, or Mr. Tony Bloss to introduce everyone there in the team. And I know then after with this, um, uh, the, the introductions, I think it'd be an opportunity now for them to make a presentation in particular uh, to this uh, substitute chapter eight. And then of course, then of course, I would like to again have the, the members of the body uh, to, to field whatever comments or questions that they right. have. Um, also, uh, just to reiterate, um, as we had before, we're going to take this section by section. Of course, there'll be um, uh, opportunities for each member to ask questions. Um, same uh, limits on the five minutes, and we will allow for a second round in the event that you need more time. All right, uh, Tony? Thank you, Francis. Thank you, Senator. Uh, okay, on my right, uh, we have uh, Rick Burr from City Corps, who did the 90, 1993 replanting and tobacco bonds. 
Also, we have Ali Dintiaco, our own uh, Tamilita here, Bank of America Vice President and Financial Advisor for us. Jim Scott from UBS, the, the Executive Director uh, of, uh, of the UBS. And of course, uh, 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 Tina Garcia, the Deputy Director of GetCo. Nick, for, for the record, Mr. Mr. Chair, the, yes, sir. The uh, that the, deci the decision of the body is that we have pre-chosen the the underwriters and for this uh, bond issue even before we authorized it. Senator Calvin, do you want to yield? I think there was there was some clarification made during recess. Obviously, what's occurred there has been an RFP for a financial advisor. So, so again, there are financial advisors uh, to the government of Guam that are here to present testimony and giving advice on on borrowing measures as a result of an RFP. Senator Pangilinan. Yeah, but but were they selected? I mean, it it really is to me. I understand the explanation, and I said I know the explanation. Doesn't mean I agree with the explanation. I think it's highly improper that the body uh, open itself up to entertaining underwriters who have been chosen for a bond issue that was authorized, of which authority was off, was repealed. Usually, when they come back down, is because we've issued an RFP, but the RFP no longer. I mean, the authorization for that bond issue is no longer in existence, and uh, I just want. You know, and, and if the body decides and that's what it wants to do, I just think that, uh, you know, it, it brings to question the legality of, of the proceedings uh, and, and so forth. So, I mean, it's, it's no, uh, no, no um, slight on, on the individuals that are here. It's just that the process, I think, has to be thoroughly uh, above, uh, you know, in terms of the, the actions of the body and have to be pursuant to the procurement laws. Senator, uh, sorry, Nick Fleur from Citigroup. I believe we were we were selected subject as underwriters subject to legislative approval of of the bond financing, and so the, the RFP that we actually responded to some time back was subject to your affirmation of passing legislation for the bond issue. So obviously, we would underwrite if the bond issue was in fact passed. Uh, the RFPs are issued for the underwriters, uh, we issue it in anticipation of the financing. Um, we, in this case, we had an anticipation of a 1993 refinancing, and, um, and we issued the RFP in order to get the, um, the needed materials to provide the financing and answer, I mean, financing options that are available to the body, and that's how we are issued. Should we not get the proper authority, um, that's that's um, the risk that the underwriters take. Then, then I, I really believe that uh, then uh, this, this is the best pre uh, preordained uh, act that I can think of. And uh, have at it, folks. You're up. Okay. Um, we're going to go ahead and then allow him uh, to make a presentation consistent with what the uh, Mr. Chairman. Even after what the question. previous speaker uh, have said. Uh, I just understand that uh, this, w this was subject, this was issued based on some kind of feeling that the legislature may be wanting to float these bonds. By what authority did you have to float these bonds? If okay, in, in the 250 version, by the way, Mr. Chairman, we have a provision to RFP this out. Okay. It's there. You can read it. It's there. So you can't continue to say you don't know what we're talking about. All right. That's fine, but by, I just don't want to engage in some uh, illegal activity. Okay. Well, it's a pleasure of the body. Okay. Okay. Senator Guthridge? Mr. Chairman, I'm just a little confused about this because uh, I think uh, all the senators here are very interested in, in pursuing uh, these options for discussion purposes, but 
as a new senator, I want to be sure that I'm not involved in something that may create a problem later in terms of the processes involved to procure the services of the uh, representatives that are here today. Is there some way to get some kind of assurance that this was done properly and that this legislature is not entertaining something that will later come back and bite us? I do you want to... Uh, I think Jocko is a Bank of America financial advisor. And she I, can I understand that, but does this legislature have a legal counsel who can affirm that the process we're beginning now is appropriate and proper in accordance with Guam's laws? Do you want to take a break to consult with the... Uh, I think, target? well, I, I think we need to. I, I we'll take a couple of minutes break to consult first with legal counsel. Um, had the privilege of uh, bringing our legal counsel, David Highsmith, and of course, uh, Art Clark, Calvin Clark, who is representing uh, Getka. Uh, so at this point, uh, we're going to go ahead and um, uh, allow uh, uh, questions specifically to each one of these attorneys uh, with regard to the issue was raised earlier. Um, Mr. Clark, would you care to, um, um, you, you, you understand the issue before us. Would you like to speak to it? Sure. And in particular, okay. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I do apologize. As soon as the committee of the whole with regard to a finance matter, we do need to ask everyone who has not already been uh, sworn in to stand. That would only be you, Art. So could you please stand and be sworn? Yes. All right. Thank you. Um, go ahead and proceed, Mr. Clark. Okay. Well, as I understand, the question is relative to uh, bond council being uh, some, uh, hired in anticipation of the issuance of the bond before an actual uh, bond issuance has been uh, issued by legislation, and then their involvement uh, at this stage in the development of the RFP for the issuance of the bond. And it, it gets, it goes to GetGo's enabling statute, which is 12 GCA 50103K, which defines GetGo as a central financial manager and consultant for the agencies and instrumentalities of the government of Guam. Now, included within this role, it says, the technical assistance by the corporation shall include but not be limited to, and that's a phrase that is used often in the legal uh, context, meaning, okay, we're going to give you a list, but really the powers can be broader than what's on the particular list. But even within the list itself of, of the powers of the corporation relative to bond issuance, it talks about obtaining funds through bonds, structuring bond issuances, preparation and dissemination of financial and investment information, including bond prospectuses, etc. So just in their capacity as financial manager, I mean, there's, you know, I mean, GetCA has the, the uh, I guess, the authority to go out and hire people that it needs to offer assistance to GetCA itself in the course of performing its work. It's just like any agency in the, in, in, throughout the government. I mean, it's a decision that needs to be made by the administrator in the context of, you know, receiving instructions from the board as far as, okay, well, you know, the board will decide, you know, we need these particular services at this particular stage, go out and hire somebody to do it. So at this part, if, if it's, if there's nothing in the procurement process relative to bonds itself that says GetCA has to wait until there's actually been legislation authorizing the issuance of a particular bond before GetCA can, can go out and start uh, uh, hiring uh, 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 technical uh, expertise to help, uh, experts to help in, in the uh, process of obtaining bonds. It's just an internal decision that needs to be made by the uh, board that we need these services at this stage in time, even if it's anticipation, and, you know, like hiring a consultant, hiring an expert, hiring something where they will go out and they'll be able to solicit these services. So that's, to me, is clearly within the scope of GetCA's authority as central financial manager for the government of Guam. Okay. Um, I would like to ask uh, our legal counsel, uh, Attorney uh, Smith, to go ahead and opine with respect to this issue. has asked me to uh, prepare a written memorandum on this. So I have heard the, you know, get his position. I've heard the objections raised uh, by the senators and the minority council. I've looked at the statutes governing uh, GEDCA and the procurement law. And over the weekend, I will prepare a written uh, 
opinion uh, regarding the appropriateness of this section of the proposed bill and the uh, appropriateness of proceeding on it. Uh, and I propose to have that on everyone's, every senator's desk Monday morning, which they can then examine and which can be part of the, the record here and which uh, can be part of the discussion Monday uh, when we come back. I believe it's proposed to come back Monday morning. And uh, recess until 10 a.m. on Monday morning, which time we'll continue this discussion.